Hello, welcome to the management channel. My name is Jack Alexis. I'm a lecturer in strategy, portfolio project, and operations management. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to insert Slack time into your project schedule using Burst and Merge activities. I'm going to, to explain what Burst and Merge activities are in a minute, but before I do so, let's take a look at my screen. And here, what I have is a um, simple project schedule. Now, uh, I keep it simple for demonstration purposes, but I guarantee if you can do what I'm going to show you with this simple project, you can do it with any project. Now, the reason for that is because projects are usually divided into smaller parts, like phases or sprints, right? So if you can do it with a small part of a project like that, you can do it in a project with a thousand activities. It doesn't matter, really. So um, I have two, I have 10 activities here, including two milestones, a start milestone and a finish milestone. Now, what is the problem with the schedule? The problem with the schedule is that it lacks flexibility. All my activities are on the critical path. You can see this here from the Gantt chart view, but you can also see it in this column where it says everything is critical. So a project without a uh, project schedule without flexibility is a really bad schedule. So we're going to fix this using burst and merge activities. Now, look at this same information that I have here. I'm going to show you um, the same information in a different way. So I do have uh, this network diagram, but I do have two burst activities, activity A, and activity C. And also I have a merge activity, activity H. Now activity A is a burst activity. Now, what is a burst activity? Now a burst activity is an activity that serves as predecessor to two or more activities. Uh, the thing here is that I can't start activity B or activity C until I complete activity A. So there is a finish to start relationship between activity A and activity B and between activity A and activity C. Now, same thing, same thing here. C is a burst activity. It serves as predecessor to two activities, right? Um, on the other hand, activity H is a merge activity. A merge activity is an activity that serves as successor to two or more activities. Now, the thing is, I can't start H until I complete all the activities G, E, and F. Now, this situation, as you can see here, when I have merge activities, if um, the predecessor activities have different durations, that's one of the things that give me the opportunity to have different parts in my schedule. Same thing here. As you can see here, instead of having all my activities in one path, I have three paths, actually. One critical path and two non-critical path, right? So that's um, the way you do it. Now, um, this situation, this scenario, um, I uh, in this scenario, I can start B and C at the same time. I think I've said that before, because, uh, and actually E and F at, at the same time if I wanted to, uh, because they are independent. E and F are independent uh, activities, B and C, are uh, also independent activities. Um, so, you know, another way to do that would be using task relationships like start to start uh, or finish to finish. But here we use burst and merge activities to achieve this. 
So let's see how we can do this in in the in the in the software. As you can see here, I have I have no slack time, right? Uh, and I'd like you to remember this because um, uh, if you take a look at the activities on the critical path, they have no slack time. And remember how we calculate slack time here. And I'm going to show you this in a minute. Now, if you take a look up here, I have zero free slack and zero total slack. So let's change the situations. Let's create uh, a network diagram in the software using the same information we have here um, on this network. Now, I have this information here. I'm going to copy it. Same information you have in the network diagram. And I'm going to delete this bad relationship here. I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to copy everything here. Hold on. Here you go. And paste this information. Et voila. So as you can see, I have a different scenario. The same information I have here is what you saw uh, in the slide, right? And I have total slack um, here uh, in this activity, sign team. I have total slack of 15 days here, 15 days here, 35 days here, and another 15 days here. I'm just going to say free slack, I have free slack here and there. Now, this is a more flexible schedule, a better schedule. Now, why wouldn't you do things in, in parallel? There are two reasons you wouldn't do things in parallel. Um, you didn't do things in parallel because of the nature of the work. Uh, the nature of the work does not allow you to do it. For example, you can't test software until you build it. So you have to build it first and then um, test it. Now, let me show you here again. Why don't you, uh, the other reasons is because you don't have enough resources. First, the nature of the work. Second, you don't have enough resources. Now, if I want to do B and C at the same time, if I'm only one person, um, I would have to multitask, but we can't multitask really. So what I can do, I can ask Peter to work on activity B and Daisy to work on activity C while I do something else. But I can't really do that at the same time. So if you have resources and the nature of the work allows it, then you can expedite your project duations by fast tracking. Um, doing things, as many things you can in parallel. So that's going to be all for this video. Thank you for, for watching. So what you've learned here, you've learned how to um, create flexibility, add flexibility to your project schedule by using burst and merge activities. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel to receive alerts when new videos. Uh, posted. Thank you.